Now we look at using the EQ, the Equate for RAM address assignment. Another common usage of EQ is for the address assignment of the general purpose region of the file register. We'll examine the following rewrite of the earlier example using EQ. So we see that in the first line we've got a uh, we've got a line that we've called my reg. We're going to equate it to the location 12 assign location assign a location uh, in RAM to my reg. Then we're going to load a value of zero into the working register. The next step we're going to move the value in the working register to a file and that file will be the my reg file so we'll clear the my reg with that zero from the working register and so now the location 12 has a zero in it. The fourth step move LW 22 so now we're going to put a value of 22 hex into the working register add the working uh, value at the working register to a file my reg so my reg now is equal to the working register plus the value of the my reg then we're going to do it again and add it we're going to do it again and add it we're going to do it one more time and add it from the working register to the value of the working register we've got a new a new uh, instruction there add w w so this is especially helpful when the address needs to be changed in order to use a different pick chip for a given project. It's much easier to refer to a name than a number when addressing the RAM address locations. In the next program, we're going to look at um, moving a value of 9 into the RAM location 0 through 4 and then add them together and place the sum in location 10 hex. So again, we'll move through this first line. We're calling my val, and we're going to equate it to 9. So you see in the comments, my val equals 9. And then line called r0, equate to 0, assign the RAM address to r0. r1, equate to 1, do the same thing to r1. So we do the same thing to r1, r2, R3 and R4. The last step is an instruction to sum the values and that sum is a equate to hex location 10H. In the next example then move a literal value to the working register my uh, my val working register then has a value of 9 in it in each of the steps, R0, R1, R2, R3, and R4, we are taking the RAM location given, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we are loading the working register value of 9 to it. So all of those locations ends up having then a 9 loaded into them just by telling it to use the, uh, the myVal instruction. Okay, then we do a move LW, 0, we clear the register out with a 0, and we're going to add each of the working register values to R0 through R4. And so we add R0 to the working register, and then do a move working register to file sum. So this is the ease of using the equate value to assign values to a RAM address, um, especially if you've got lots of uh, addresses that you want the same value or a value that's been operated on in, from a previous um, step that involved an arithmetic or a logic function. The org, the origin func dire directive is used to indicate the beginning of an address. It can be used for both code and data. The number that comes after the org must be in hex. The end directive 
Another important pseudocode. This indicates to the assembler the end of the source, the ASM file. And we'll see that file extension used when we get ready to use the uh, MyLab IDE. The end directive is the last line of the PIC program, meaning that anything after the end directive in the source code is to be ignored by the assembler. The list directive, unlike the org and the end, are used by all assemblers. The list directive is unique to the PIC assembler. It indicates to the assembler the specific PIC chip for which the program should be assembled. In this case you can see the list P and it gives the number uh, of the model or style of this PIC 18F5458. This tells the PIC assembler to assemble the program specifically for the PIC 18F458 microcontroller. And we use the list then to state the target chip. And you'll, you'll once we get into loading this into the uh, using the PIC kit 2 um, and the IDE, you're going to my, my lab IDE, this is going to make more sense to you. The include, the pound sign include directive tells the PIC assembler to use the libraries associated with the PIC chip for which we're compiling the program. And we'll find out that there are lots of libraries available, so it saves you from having to write code. If you can just call a library, it makes the coding a lot easier. Underscore config directive. The underscore config directive tells the assembler the configuration bits for the target PIC chip. It's important to use the correct underscore config directive because incorrect use may make the chip unusable. The configuration bits are read during the power up of the PIC device and are stored at location 3000000 hex, big number. Microchip has defined the underscore config directive symbols to ease in the configuration. These symbols are located in the .inc file for the device that's being used. The Radix directive, we can use a Radix directive to indicate whether the numbering system is hexadecimal or decimal. The default, of course, is hex if we do not use the Radix or the Radix directive. If we use the Radix directive, the default representation will change to decimal and any unformatted number will be interpreted as decimal rather than hex, as we've seen before. Okay, we'll stop this one here, and when we come back, we'll talk about rules for labels in assembly language.